Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to create an arena setup so that you can take photos of your model. And this thing is self-standing. Let's get started. Just got back from picking up some supplies to make this arena. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I'm using foam core board. If you're using regular wood, you don't need to do this, but because I know it's going to warp, the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the backside of this. And that will basically warp it in one direction. So when I apply everything to the other direction, it evens it out. So I just applied some paint to the back and I'm gonna let that dry so I can turn it over and start working the other side. If I left that for a day, it would probably start to warp, but that's not a big deal. Again, using uh, regular wood would be, you wouldn't need to have to do this. Well, that's drying, I have some balsa wood and I have enough to go the height of my board, which is 600 millimeters. And I have enough pieces to go all the way across the width and I don't have to do any cutting. These are exactly as per the board I'm using. Since my board is 80 millimeters wide, I'm gonna divide that by four. So I'm gonna make four panels up here. That means each one is gonna be 20 millimeters wide, which is close to an eight inch board in real life. Now with the best side of the boards facing up, I'm going to mark 20 millimeters across here so that I can draw straight lines all the way down. So I just want to carefully mark the 20, another 20, another 20, and mark that on several places along the board so that you can connect a ruler or a straight edge. Once you have those marked, line them up. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time because I don't have a long enough straight edge. And I'm gonna take a pen and push down along that line and you can see here, I'm creating a panel. I'm not going all the way through. I'm just creating a line for the panel. And I'm gonna do that all the way down the whole length. And I'm gonna do that on the good side of every board I'm gonna use. You can use other tools for this as well. And I just happen to be using a brown pen for this. Again, the color is not really showing, but I figured if it does, I want it to be brown. As I want my boards to be light colored, I'm gonna take some tea bags, I've got four here, and then I'm gonna put some hot water in there and let that sit for a while while I finish these boards. And just for fun, I wanted to show you the brand name of our tea bags in Ecuador. When I'm making these lines, you can see the shape of this pen with a really rounded edge. That's allowing me to get a deep piece here for look without going too deep like a thinner pen would do. Now I have all my panels ready to go. And also at this time, the piece that I painted, my uh, foam core board is ready as well. For the support system of the arena, I have some balsa wood here, and this is 18 by 18 square pieces. And I want these different colors. So I took three of those and stained them. These are the same length as everything else. Same height as the uh, foam core board and our paneling. Now I'm gonna take this painted piece and this is the right side of the board now. And what I want to do is take all of these and glue them onto this board. Now I have nine of these and it fits perfectly from end to end and top to bottom. There's lots of glue types you can use, and I'm using my usual oohoo. Just put some around the edge, a little bit in the middle. You don't need to over glue it, but you should get the corners and the edges quite well. As you go, just butt them up next to each other. And make sure they cover the whole board. Try to make sure that the bottom is even. When you're putting these on, if you put it about an inch away and then push it in, you're getting even better coverage of the glue. Here is my board covered. And if you are going to paint it in the same day, 
you can leave this to dry for about half an hour to an hour. But if you're going to leave it all night, then cover it with some sort of weights, like a books or something to dry. Now to look at the kickboard size, a kickboard in a real horse arena is between four foot and six foot. Four foot is 135 millimeters for our traditional one nine scale. Five foot is 170 and six foot is 200. So if you see this model here, this is an approximate four foot high wall. So I've got some hard wood here that I'm cutting to be 135 millimeters tall. Now you can cut this uh, craft hardwood with a saw, but I just used a sharp knife and about 10 to 15 passes did it. Now I'm taking the three pieces I have here and lining them up and then determining how much extra I have to cut off this last piece. Now you can paint your kickboards whatever color you want. You can keep them the same color as you're gonna do the wall or for what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stain them the same color as the columns. Now the glue's dried for over half an hour. I've got my tea here that is now lukewarm. And using a sponge or some paper towel, now you can paint this or stain it or whatever you want, but if you're using the tea, all you gotta do is rub it in. And you can see it just darkens it up just a little bit. And I'm going to work that in for a bit all over the board. Try not to leave it too wet before it dries. The wetter it is, the more it's likely to try to bend. But also doing two coats of this makes no difference. So try to get it all done in one coat. I love this natural light color that staining with tea provides. It's so super easy. So this is day one of making the arena wall. At this point, find a place to put this and put weights such as books on there and let it dry overnight fully. Now that this is dry, I want to figure out where I want to put my vertical supports. Now, realistically, they would probably be quite a distance apart, but I want to use three. So I'm going to put one in the middle and one near each end, equal distance apart. When you're doing this, you may want to decide where you're, what you want to put up here. You may want to put windows here or a mirror or different signs or a holder for some of these uh, poles. So if you want poles, you need enough space in between for those. I'm going to store my poles vertically here, so I don't need the width for that. But determine what your overall layout is for what you want to accomplish. Then using a miter box and the same 18 millimeter square as I've used here, I've cut a piece to go from here to my center and another one from center to here. And I am gonna glue those on the bottom so that they act so they're parallel. So if it's standing, it's gonna be part of the base. You can color those, you can dye them, or you can just leave them as is. Once you've applied the glue, you can use something like that to make sure you have a, right along the base because it's going to actually stand on this as well. Next I've cut some pieces of the same stuff to go along here and this is going to be the top of the wall, the kick wall. And at the end I'm leaving a blank spot where I can put in holes if I want to. But you could design this any way that you want to. So how this is going to work is this is going to be the kickboard. And a kickboard needs to be on the angle coming out so that the rider doesn't hit their legs. So this is going to sit on here. These pieces are gonna be the top and it's gonna go down to the ground and connect to these pieces at the bottom. So if you can see, it is on an angle now. So what you have to do to two, determining by the size of this and the angle, where these need to be glued so that when you glue this piece on, it's even at the top with that and comes right down to the floor here and not overpassing the floor. Remember, it sits on that. It's better if it's a little higher than a little lower. Once you determine that height, you can glue those on down here. And again, leaving the piece at the end like I did here is just my choice of where I want to put poles. You have to design yours in the way that's unique to you. So I'm using weights to 
to make sure that dries flat. And I'm gonna let that dry for probably an hour before I put the kickboards on. I also added two little pieces under the end here to keep it solid. I just put glue on and slid them in. And that way this won't come apart. Now here's a quick look at my setup so far. Now I'm gonna take the kickboards, line the top up down there, and this should be level-ish with the ground and glue those on all the way along. When you're applying the glue, I would apply it to the top here and the top here, because that is your two touch points. It's not gonna glue down here or there, just at the top. You don't want too much where it's gonna overflow. Just getting the glue right to the edge so that it will actually make contact on the top and down here. These are the very limited touch points here. Once you have it glued on, make sure it's not sticking below the lower level. I'll not let the whole thing dry for quite a while, maybe at least an hour. And here is a view from the other side. You can see that opening where I'm going to do the poles and the rest is going to act as a shelf. And once it's dry, I'm just going to put that up. And you can see it now stands by itself. And here is what it looks like with the, a bottle horse sticking next to it. Again, this is very plain at this point in time. Now you can make two of these and put them side by side, or you can make a corner and uh, whatever you want for your layout. Next, we have to consider decorating it. And I'm not gonna go into any details here, but you can add signs, racks for poles, you can put a window that shows to the outside. You can put a mirror up there, but if you put a mirror, it's gonna be very hard to do your photography with. But anyways, let's move towards the base now. It's gonna need a base. For the base, I have another piece of foam core board, exactly the same size as the main piece. Now, of course, you can use wood. It's just easier for me to use foam core, and I like the lightness of it. If you use foam core, paint the back, and then paint the front brown. You want the brown so that the dirt has a good base to sit on. If you're using wood, just paint one side brown. For the foam core, once both sides are dry, put a weight on it and let it dry overnight so that it doesn't warp. Now that I've got this fully dry, I am then going to choose the dirt I'm gonna use. For me, I've actually purchased some but you can dig dirt out of your garden. Make sure you get the fine stuff and that it's not full of grass or anything like that. But I think I'm just gonna go for the purchased one. Also, you're gonna need some glue and I'm gonna just use plain white school glue. I do have quite a few of these, but I'm just gonna work one little bit at a time. And you can also use some brown paint if you don't like the color, but I'm happy with this color. For my mix, I'm using a large cup here in these plastic cups of sawdust and then I am putting in then of this one pound of white glue I'm using at least a third of it with that and I'm adding in a little bit of water and mixing that up if I need to add more glue or water as I go I will now I have a nice gooey sticky mess that I want consistent through the entire cup I'm working with here. Next I'm going to apply it to my board and just run it around and I'm going to keep working on this till I've got it all covered from edge to edge before we do another step. As I'm going I'm kind of mixing it in with the stuff that was already there. Oh and if I find a, a dry spot like that I'm gonna put a little bit of mixture of glue and water on top of that and mix it in. That will allow me to work as I go. Add that little extra that seemed to be dry. Now I have this surface covered in goo. We're gonna shape it. And the part that I'm gonna put along the back wall, I wanna build up a little higher, and then I wanna flatten it out. And for that, you can use some saran wrap and flatten it with your hands or even 
have a tool such as this to flatten it out a little bit. And while you're working at that, don't be afraid to throw in some of your nice clean barn tools and add some muck to those as well. Just adds a little bit of detail to make your stuff look like it's used. Working it with wet hands also works. Now if you build up the side here at the back, you're probably gonna to wanna to go to the spot where the horse goes and make it a little indented where the horses are going all the time. And basically we're sculpting the shape we want. Now, if you want, you can take a fork and I've got a little bit of water on the side. If you want, you can create a freshly raked arena. We're gonna put hoof prints in it next. And I mean, the rakes go wherever they want to go, depending on who's raking it. So you can do whatever design you want. It works slowly. Once you have any pattern there, you can take a model and you can apply hoof prints. And first of all, I'm gonna apply them into the working riding area, both directions. You can use more than one model. Make sure you wash your model afterwards and you can have hoof prints of them coming off into a circle or whatever you wanna do. You can do more when it's dried a little more. You can also sprinkle, for me, I'm using sawdust. I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit on top of this while it's drying. As you're working, make sure you look at it sideways too in the position that you'll actually take photographs of. Make sure there's nothing picking up. If you wanna tap areas down, just lightly tap them down. Now I'm gonna mix up a tiny little batch here. And this time I'm gonna mix in some brown paint. And there's my mix. It's brown paint, my sawdust, or whatever dirt you're using, and some glue. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that and put it every here and there. You guessed it, horse poop. Just worked into where the horses are going. Just a little bit for some added color. That works great on the accessories as well. For the extra, I added it in my wheelbarrow and mixed it in with some of my bedding from my barn. Okay, now here is my base up against the wall. Now I'm gonna mix up a little bit more and put some just on the edges of my wall as well. You can see there's a worn area where the horses are back and forth. It looks like it was freshly raked in the morning, but some horses have been out there doing some dressage work or whatever. And that's the look that I personally want. You can do whatever you want with yours, but add some interest to it. Once you're done, leave it flat on the floor and let it dry oh, probably two days. Now this is dry, you can add all sorts of things. You can put signs, now my printer stopped working, it's not printing blue, so I'm not actually gonna use this. But you can put signs, little caution signs up, you can put a letter for dressage. You can put uh, mirrors. Make sure if you do mirrors that they're low enough that the horse and rider can be seen in the mirror so the rider can see what they're doing. Another thing you can do is using pastels or just basic eyeshadow, you can add some color here to make it look worn. So we're gonna weather it a little. And I'm just using makeup for this. So I'm using just a simple brown, and I want to get into the corners especially. Dirt always seems to hit, I'll just near where the shelf is. And this gives it some realistic looks. I'm also dirtying up my nice white signs as well. So I added a little more dirt here because that's where my poles are going to be. And you can see right along the edge where I've added it. And I can just play with this till I like the good old dirty look. Also, I can put darker color down here just to make it a little blotchy as well. So that's all I'm gonna do on this one right now. And as you can see, I've got the weathering. You can see where the poles are sitting. 
and you can do all sorts of things with yours. So here we go with our finished arena. And you can see how I have it set up. It stands by itself. There's my dirty stuff I made to go with everything. And printouts, and I'll probably add a mirror to mine, but right now that's all I'm doing for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me on my journey. Please check out the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.